and uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you're all keeping well. I sincerely hope that and that um, you don't feel too isolated. I'm going to uh, give a short painting demonstration of uh, painting this tree, which is in Borrowdale. Magnificent tree. I hope you'll find it interesting. Um, just before we do, uh, thanks to Anna and Sean up from London, helping with all the tech side of things. And I hope this is coming through clearly for you. We'll get going straight away, but um, may I start by saying that I was painting trees when I was a kid and I learned when it was painless, when you didn't know you were learning. And uh, my initial inspiration was Alfred Bestel in the Rupert books, those glorious pictures of the rolling English countryside, uh, Alfred Bestel. But when I started to take a more serious interest, uh, I had an epiphany of how to paint trees in oils. And that's what I'd like to share with you tonight. And a great inspiration to me is the American illustrator Maxfield Parrish and this wonderful book by Coy Ludwig with a fantastic lengthy chapter on Parrish's techniques. But uh, it was these, these images that captivated me. Um, highly coloured as you can see, but um, almost hallucinogenic trees there. I just thought they were fantastic and I learned a lot from this book. And uh, another great um, inspiration is the wonderful Ivan Shishkin, the painter of the Russian forest, a Victorian era painter, magnificent paintings. Let me just give you a, a sample. These are the paintings I aspired to learn from, as well as all the, the great paintings in museums. So I, my initial learning was in books. But just uh, look at some of these incredible images of forests. Maxfield Parrish and Shishkin. And then the other great books, the one I like for watercolour, um, I'm trying to think, there's, uh, well, there's Rex Vicat Cole, The Artistic Anatomy of Trees, and for watercolour, Stanley Badmin. Some of you may remember the Shell series, which I remember as a kid, fantastic um, paintings of English trees, the whole gamut, which was re were released through Shell Garages. But let's make a start. Um, I'm going to make this fairly short and snappy, but um, it's giving you uh, the information re required for this technique. And the essence of it is that uh, I'll be working from dark to light. That was the great, the great sort of uh, secret that I came up, that I discovered, which is commonplace practice. And you may have seen this kind of thing on YouTube where you work the tree from dark to light. That is if you're working in oils or in um, acrylics or pastel. Uh, not quite the same for watercolour unless you're using it as a gouache. So here's my palette here. I've just got a few colours. I've got white, Naples yellow, ochre. I would suggest you mix your greens with ochre quite a bit. It's a sympathetic soft yellow that will produce lovely greens. Burnt sienna. The other colours, um, I think sap green is a great green to use with uh, yellow ochre if you're fairly inexperienced it gives you fairly natural green so I recommend that not so much the viridian here which takes a little more getting used to for my blues I've got cerulean and I've got uh, ultramarine I've got a nice black and this color is raw umber anyway that's the palette and I can post some of these things up to remind you uh, as we go so this working from dark to light you see I've laid in here a, qu a quick acrylic summary of the background and I'm going to mix up some colours here. This is the uh, cerulean with raw umber. You see, it's as green as you need, really. You don't really need much green. You're working the shadow colours. So we'll get some of this on. See, it gives that gives a cool grey green. You can add a little bit of ochre to that. You really don't need much. And the first thing I'm doing is looking for the uh, breadth and the mass of this uh, this shape. It's tempting to think, oh, crikey, the way to do that complex tree would be uh, it's thousands of leaves, you know. How long have you got to paint this? Half a lifetime. But uh, that's not the way to really do it. It can be done that way, but this is uh, as good a way of, of any way you work the dark shapes first. So you're looking for the plummy shadows. You're leaving plenty of uh, gaps, so just building up the volume. If you wanted to do a bit of a charcoal sketch to help, you could certainly do that. I'm leaving generous pockets of sunlight coming through. 
but I'm not doing this sort of spotty thing, space invaders I call them, I'm more sort of rolling the brush into glorious clumps of foliage. Just shifting the colour and you'll never see me mixing thoroughly unless I'm doing a smooth sky. It's more a case of scrambling the colours together uh, without too much stirring and mixing. This is a great technique, it takes a bit of practice, but oh, by the way, that brush, you see the filbert shape, the rounded shoulders of the brush. This is a great technique. It's, it's like a rolling technique. See how it gives, it gives you the brushy foliage textures, just reaching up into the sky with the, uh, the glorious form of the tree. It's a wonderful tree. I've painted it uh, several times since the 1990s. It's an old friend, really. And it, although it's a great tree, it's it's not that particularly that makes it outstanding. It's this amazing setting, which if you'd like to go and have a look, it's easy to find. Although it takes a bit of a leg stretch because you take the car, if you're traveling by car, along from Keswick into Borrowdale. And uh, you take the Borrowdale Road, follow it round to Rostwaite. Then shortly after Rostwaite, there's a turning to the left, which leads down to Stonethwaite Village. And if you uh, head in that direction, the road will run out and you can park on the grass verges. And then it's a short uh, walk past the campsite along the river. It's just fantastic. And you come to the confluence of Langstrath Beck, Green Up Gill, which is over here. And this is Eagle. You just see the edge of Eagle Crag there on the right. And the, the river is just wonderful for swimming. Deep green, emerald green pools of uh, crystal clear freezing cold water right so back to this process here you see rapidly that tree begins to form in silhouette that's what i'm looking for i'm imagining the tree as a silhouette you're thinking of the tree this will give you a, the sensation that the tree has a an interior and a, and a, a backdrop a, a far side if you like and what you're doing now is um laying in the breadth of shadows within the tree, looking for the depth of tone. I'm using white spirit and I'm using liquid as a painting medium. If I need to thin the paints, I'll dip into this stuff here. And a trusty cup of tea at the elbow. Here we go. It's still in very much in the dark area. You see that rolling brush stroke again. If you're working on a canvas, you can catch the canvas threads. See how it just breaks up the colour. It gives the impression of the myriads of delicate leaves. This is an ash tree. Although I dare say if you're if you're practicing and learning, you'd just be happy if it looks like a tree. I'm certainly not bothered at, in the demonstration to particularly make it an ash tree, but uh, I know that it is, and ash has a, a lovely rhythmic shape. Lovely sort of fountains of leaves, feathery. But this is a great technique if you were painting oak as well. Let's put some framework in. Change colour here. Just dipping into the paint medium. I'm going to take a really dark colour. This is my black. I might mix it with a bit of uh, burnt sienna. I hope you can see that colour mixing there. This is for... I'm going to put the skeletal framework of the tree in. You see the dark colour. Everything that, that goes on at first is the interior. It's looking into the, uh, the shadows within. Don't be concerned that, oh, it's, I want to paint the tree in sunlight. I can't do all that dark. I want it to look bright. Well, the, the illusion of sunlight, it, uh, it, half of it relies on this dark tone to give the feeling of contrasting shadows. This is um, a very fine brush dipped into white spirit so that the paint has a flow. And I'll be able to paint these uh, whippy limbs and twiggy bits and pieces. Put them all stick on here for our control. So um, let's try and paint some of this fine tracery. If you're working in acrylic, that the first stage will have dried and you'll be able to create very graphic, crisp details 
Oil paint takes a little bit of practice to get the colours to sit over wet paint, but if you dilute it, you see that it slips off the brush and slides over the, uh, the still wet base layer. A word about drawing, if you, um, if you read some good books or have some online tutorials about tree drawing, um, one thing to think about is the tapering so that the branches taper and become progressively fine as they leave the main stem and the trunk is thinner towards the crown and thicker towards the root. It's almost an inevitable rule that you can rely on. With occasional aberrations, if the tree is pollarded, it's not going to behave quite like that. But uh, you'll generally get a more convincing tree if you can understand the tapering quality of the lattice work of twigs, branches and trunk. See that 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 gap, central gap where the sky, the the sunlight's on the on the fell is poking through. That gives a real dynamic sense of uh, the tree being in the landscape. Some of these branches radiating out, responding to the weight of the leaves. I'm going to try and get this done in short order it's uh, well over halfway through probably not much longer now i just want to bring it up with uh, the, the illumination so with that in mind i'm going to put a bit of sunlight here this is a burnt sienna color with ochre a little bit of naples yellow see that warm tanny mix there i'm just going to try to uh, catch the sunlight down the side of the trunk picking up here and there on these branches. Just little flickers of sunlight where the occasional twig or branch catches the light. I'm working at a, a rare old pace here, but if you want to try this, you can take, it, take your time with it. It's the process that I'm trying to talk about rather than uh, how much finish you give it. I'm going to, going to uh, reinforce the darks and then put the sunlight on and that should be it. Let's just get these a bit darker in here. The tree is going to grow now. It's going to expand when the outer leaves go on. But if I can get across tonight this, uh, this wonderful process of um, taking the, the form of the tree from the dark to the light it really did revolutionize my understanding of how to paint trees. It's not the only way I do them, but it's a long tried and tested method I love. So now this, the tree will expand as we add these other colors. Let's have a look at the mixing. We've got, uh, this is the one I was suggesting that uh, if you're fairly new to painting, is a very useful colour, that's the sap green. Now the Viridian will give a stronger accent, a stronger green. I'm quite comfortable with Viridian, but some people find it, it makes their greens rather too acid, but you just use it sparingly. So with this, this lighter green now, you'll, you'll see that the, the, the more vibrant green of the sunlight And pick up on the outer edges of the tree. What you do at this stage is consider your lighting. I'm, I'm going for sunlight. So you consider the lighting, what, what that's doing to the tree. And in this case, it's, it's coming from the west, westering light over Eagle Crag and striking on the right hand side. So let's mix up a sunlight colour for the greens here. 
This is the uh, Naples yellow. This is the sap green. It's a very pale, brighter green. A little bit of viridian will make sure it's definitely a green. But uh, I always err on the side of the yellow ochre to calm the greens down. Just a lovely. And then you'll see me dip into the liquid, the paint medium. What this does is it facilitates the wet paint sliding off the brush and picking up and sitting on top, cleanly on top of the wet paint that's there. Acrylic painters, you won't need to bother because your paint will be dry by now. So look at this, this lovely brighter green. So the sunlight's coming this way. Let's get the, uh, the sunlight on this spray of leaves here against the shadowy bank. You should see the sunlight up here. And then you're looking for deep pockets of shadow complemented by the radiant light striking on the outside illuminated foliage. This is where most of the green or the, the golds of autumn will reside in the, in the brighter areas. Think of the tree as being rounded, a globular shape, so that as it curves away from the light, it goes back into shadow. Lots of sunlight, dipping the, the brush into the paint medium, pushing the brush into the paint to load up the tip so that you, ha you have generous uh, deposits of paint on the brush. Now watch the tree grow as I push out the sunlight. Remember these leaves are on the outside, so they're, they're going to carry on over against the sky. And that gives a very ash-like texture. That's partly the brush. And of course the crown of the tree rearing its great head into the waves of light. Little quotation there from George MacDonald, sorry about that. And we're curving back into the shadows. And our tree is forming up three-dimensionally, creating uh, all of the volume and depth that I was hoping for, pushing out. On this side, any illumination is a little bit darker Go a little bit lighter there. Sunlight might just creep over the crown of the tree. There we have it. You've got to be careful with your highlighting that you don't just smother the shadows in light and flatten the tree. I'm not sure how that looks on the camera, but I've uh, gone through all of that technique as comprehensively as I can, working from dark to light. And if you like detail, you can keep working away at that. Thanks for uh, your attention. I'm really pleased that uh, you're able to join us tonight and uh, I'll no doubt see you again. Oh, thanks for all of the likes on Facebook and, uh, and what's the other one, Instagram. Yes, there we go. Good evening to you all.